So up the front here is your hitch and your A-frame. So when you go to connect the van to your vehicle, you'll back up, use your jockey wheel to adjust the height of the hitch. When you wind the hitch down onto your tow ball, this handle will click down to a bit of an angle. And then you can push it all the way down so it's nice and flat. And that means it's locked on correctly to your tow ball. You've got a standard seven pin trailer plug here. Um, you do have this additional auxiliary cord. Um, so you can have an auto electrician wire those together for a 12 pin trailer plug. Um, just to be able to run your fridge on 12 volt, but we'll go through that more at the fridge. This here is your breakaway cable. So that's designed to loop around the tow ball and clip back onto itself. And this is so if for some reason this hitch ever gave way, this breakaway will pull, it'll snap off and it'll put your handbrake on. Your handbrake, just like a car, push down for off and pull up for on. Uh, with your jockey wheel, once your hitch is all hooked up, you want to wind it up and have these arms slot up into these grooves. That just stops the wheel from spinning around while you're towing. Once you've got that wound all the way up, undo this handle and pull the whole jockey wheel unit up and your wheel will sit here against the A-frame. When you go to disconnect the van from your vehicle, you want to do that in reverse. So you undo the jockey wheel, drop it down and tighten it up and wind it up. While you're winding the jockey wheel up to get the hitch off your vehicle, you do need to hold this handle all the way up like it is now. So that way it'll release your tow ball. Uh, we'll run through that when you collect the van just because it's a bit easier to show you when you've got your vehicle there. In behind here is your A-frame. Oh, I'm sorry, your front locker. So open that up. Got a wee hook here to hold it open. Um, so you've obviously got your spare wheel in here. Um, you've got space for two 9 kilo gas bottles, but as you can see the hose only connects on the left hand side so you will have to physically swap them over. Um, it's just like a standard spin on barbecue connection there. If for some reason you ever want to shut the gas off entirely, you can come and just flick that wee handle down and that'll close the gas hose off. Just remember to open it back up when you want to use it again. You've got a leg winder here so that's for all four stabilizers on each corner of your van to wind them up and down. Just on the right hand side here is your power cord for when you're wanting to plug into a campground. Uh, you will notice that there are some grates on each side of this locker so they are open to the elements. So don't store anything in here that you don't want getting dusty or damp. Um, also these lockers do have a payload of about 20 to 22 kilos. So you don't want to overload it as it will affect your towing and structure of the van. So right up on your front corner here, this is the vent for when you're running your water heater on gas. So you only need to take this travel cover off when you're actively running the water heater on gas. Um, you'll get some warm to hot air coming out of here, that's completely normal. When you're no longer using the water heater on gas, make sure you pop this cover back on. Um, stops any dust and dirt getting in there and also spiders because it's nice and warm, they'll create webs in there which will really affect the ignition of your water heater. So when you're not using it, just click it over the top, make sure it's on. Just behind that is your water housing. So this here is for your fresh water. So you've got your water pump here, uh, sort of a trigger style connection. So hold that back and wiggle your water pump in. It will take a wee bit of a wiggle just because it's plastic on plastic. You can then release that wee trigger at the bottom. You've got your fresh water barrel. So fill that all the way up with fresh water, undo your top cap here and then drop your water pump all the way down into the bottom. You do have a wee cap here to just try and keep leaves and bits and pieces out of there. Um, so once you've got that all set up, you can then go inside and turn your water pump on. Um, best to not let your water barrel get below sort of quarter full, um, just because there is no fresh water gauge, you do risk the barrel um, emptying and then your pump running dry. So just keep an eye on that. And then when you go to remove your water pump, just make sure you hold that trigger down again and it'll pop off like so. Right on the back corner, this is where your toilet cassette is. 
So up the top here is for your fresh water. So you want to undo that. Generally, depending on the model, it takes about 8 to 10 litres in here. Now there is a wee bit of a hump for the water to go over, so as you're pouring it, it may look full, but just keep pouring it in until the water gets quite high because it does have to push itself over that hump. Um, there is a paint toilet chemical that goes in here. It's designed to help with smell and it also lubricates all the seals inside your pump. Underneath that here is your toilet cassette itself. So you want to push down this wee yellow lever and slide it out. So these three items here are operated inside the carry van, so you don't need to worry about those. Um, when you're going to empty it, just turn your spout out. Um, if you're having trouble getting this lid off, you do have a wee air release valve at the bottom you can push. And then that lid should come off. You can then empty your toilet cassette. Um, there is a blue toilet chemical, as you can see, that goes in here. Um, you can use the cap for wee measurements. So you pour that in. Again, helps with smell, but it also helps break everything down so it's nice and easy to empty. Pop your lid back on. And then you can slide it back into the van. Just making sure it clicks behind that yellow lever again. Now, when you're storing the van, um, particularly over winter, you will want to make sure you drain the water out of your fresh water tank just so your pump doesn't seize or get frost damaged. Um, so you can undo this wee bung here and it'll empty out the water. And also off to the side here, this is an indicator so you know how full the fresh water is getting. But you pop that out at the bottom and then pull it down so it comes off the bung. And then you can pour it out and empty it. And pop that back. In there it's just really important just to make sure nothing gets frost damaged. So just at the back here underneath is your grey water outlets. Um, so you've got your grey water hose here so you just want to pop those into there. You've then got your grey water kitty so you undo the bottom one and pop your hose into there right in there. Um, so that's all your grey water. You do have a gauge at the top here so you can keep an eye on it so you know when to empty it. When it is time to empty it, you can take that hose out, um, pop the cat back on and wheel it to your dump station. Underneath here you do have a bungee cord so you can pop that through the eyelets on the caddy. You can hook it to the stabiliser so it doesn't roll around in the wind. Or you can pop your toilet cassette on there and strap it in to empty both at the same time. You do also have a wee cap and spout. So once you get to the dump station, you can pop that on the end here and that'll give you a nice direct pour when you go to empty it. Okay, right at the front corner on your door side here, this is your battery locker. So you've got your 12 volt battery here. That sort of does the same thing. You don't really have to worry about it. That's where it is if you ever need to change it. On the left hand side here is where you plug in your mains power. Um, so you got your mains power cord, yours will have a wee cap on it, so you hold that cap back. Um, there's a wee groove on the cord here which corresponds to the one on the band, so it does only go on the one way. Push that in, your wee cap will hook in up the top. And then you do have a groove in the locker and the door, so you can pop your cord in there. And that way you can lock this locker up, uh, it keeps it safe from the weather and it also stops anyone being able to get to your battery as well. So just inside your door here, this is your master switch, um, so it's currently off and then you can turn it on and that'll liven up all the 12 volt in your van. So just over by your front seating on the wall of your wardrobe here, uh, we've got a switch for your water pump. So like I said before, once you've got your water barrel all full and your pump all connected, you can come in, flick this switch on and your pump will start to run. Um, if you haven't used the van for a while, you will find you'll have to open up all your taps just to let any residual air out. Um, and then your pump will pressurise and you'll be all good to go and that wee red light will pop up. Um, you've got a wee battery light here just so you know that your battery is all charged and all good to go. So you can keep an eye on it there. Um, just across from that here, up the top here, the ultra heat. This is for running your room power heater on mains power so you've got 2000 watts 
a thousand at the bottom and 500 you may have seen a wee green light flash so what you need to do is make sure that the master switch at the bottom here is on for your room heater and you can see that green light stays on so if for some reason you don't have the green light just come and check that this switch underneath it is on um, so you can select your power rating and then you've got temperature from one right round to nine and just back to the wee circle for off just next to that here is your ultra store so this is for your water heater this is to run it on gas so you turn it to gas so we get the wee green light um, you will hear a click underneath your front seat that's your water heater trying to ignite and then you've got the temperatures from 30 right round to 70 um, as you can see we've had a red light come up so that means the water heater has failed to ignite so what you need to do is turn it off go and check your gas bottles are connected check you've got gas left and also check that you've taken the travel cover on the outside off once you've checked all those come back in turn that on and you should be good to go and underneath that is to run your water heater on mains power so all you need to do for that is turn that switch on and then your water heater will start to heat up on 240 volt so underneath the front seating on the same side as your room and water heater controls up the front here this gray unit is your water heater um, you don't really need to worry about that it does its own thing based off the controls you've selected um, but this wee yellow switch here this is for again when you're storing the van especially over winter you come in flick that switch up and that'll drain all the water out of your water heater it's also a really good idea to open up all your taps just to get out any residual water from the system just to prevent any frost damage while you're not at the van when you go to use the van again just make sure you flick this lever back down um, nothing drastic will happen if you don't it just means once you turn your water pump on all your fresh water will be pumped straight out the bottom of the van this here underneath your wardrobe is your room heater unit um, so up on the top left here these are the controls to run your 12 volt fan um, so on the right hand side the A is automatic so you select the fan speed and there's some temperature sensors in here so the fan will kick in and out as it's needed to maintain the temperature you've selected um, the wee dot in the middle is off and to the left is continuous and then of course you've got your fan speed at the top there um, so when you've got the fan on the heater will circulate the heat out through these wee ducts around the van just those wee brown ones and turn that off um, you can run the fan without running the heater on gas or 240 volt it'll just sort of circulate the room temperature air um, on the right hand side here is to run your room heater on gas so you want to turn the temperature up normally start it quite high this temperature dial is also your purge button so you want to push that in and then hit your igniter and while you're doing that there is a wee viewing section here so about this far down and about 25 mil in there's a wee sight glass that matches the shape of this opening um, so while you're igniting it you can keep an eye on it it'll be a blue flame and then when you release the purge button it should kick into a nice bright orange flame and you can then adjust your temperature from there and right back to the zero and then just click it ever so slightly past and that'll turn your room heater off on gas just opposite your room heater here is your fridge so up on the top left this wee red one here is to run your fridge off a battery so as you can see it doesn't light up it's not currently wired up so with that you can get an auto electrician to wire up that 12 pin trailer plug for you and then the night before you go away you'd call your fridge down on mains power or gas once you hook up your caravan you can turn the 12 volt on and that'll just maintain the temperature that your fridge is currently at um it won't cool the fridge down from warm the fridge already has to be cold and it just maintains that temperature um, so that's something you can have wired up if you like just next to that this green switch um, this is for your mains power so as long as you've got mains power plugged in your fridge will start to cool down and you've just got your wee temperature dial on just next to that so from one right around to seven and then you can just flick that off 
to turn the fridge off. Uh, on the right hand side, this is to run your fridge on gas. So with this knob, you want to push it in slightly and turn it to gas. This is also your purge button, so you'll press and hold that in and then hit the igniter here on the right hand side. A wee bit hard with one hand, but there you go. And then inside the fridge, while you're holding your purge button and hitting your igniter, there's a wee sight glass right down in the corner there. So you can see once it's got a blue flame, hold that purge button for a couple more seconds and then when you release it, it should kick into a nice bright orange flame. And then you've also got your temperature adjuster from there, one right around to five. And then to turn it off on gas, you just turn it back to the wee dial. Also with this fridge for your fridge locks, so it's currently in the open position and you just click that down to lock the fridge. Um, just make sure that your door lines up correctly. You can see I haven't quite, there we are. So just make sure that your fridge door is pushed all the way in and it'll click in like so to lock it. And then if you want to unlock your fridge, you just have to squeeze this wee green piece on the side and it'll just pop up like so and then you can open up your fridge. So this here are the elements for your oven. So make sure you push that glass all the way back. Um, so you've got four elements that will run off gas. All the controls for those are along the side here. So very much like a barbecue, push, turn and hold it normally at the highest flame. And while you're holding that in, hit the igniter on the front of your oven. And then once it's lit, you can adjust your temperature from there and turn it right back up to turn it off. Once you've used these elements, make sure the elements and all the wiring is cool to the touch because it has been known in the past, if you put this glass down when they're still too warm, it will shatter the glass. Underneath here, we've got your grill. So the controls for that are up on the left. Again, turn and hold it in, hit your igniter. So this igniter does your whole oven unit. Um, you can then adjust the temperature from there. For your grill, it might be a wee bit hard to see, but just underneath this lip here is where it'll ignite. So you can have a wee look at that. And then for your oven, exact same controls. And then your oven ignites just along that silver rail along the back there. So in your bathroom here, you've got your sink, um, but this also pulls up and connects up the top here. So it also acts as your shower. Um, yeah, just so you know, that's where that goes. And then for your toilet here, so you've got on the right hand side, you've got your wee flush. So you just twist that and that flushes into the toilet. Um, and you've then on the right hand, left hand side, sorry, you twist that and it opens up. So you can open it up, flush everything away, and then make sure you close the toilet once you're finished. Um, the cassette will only come out when the toilet is closed on the inside. So if you go to empty your toilet cassette and feel a bit of resistance, just come in and make sure that the toilet is closed. Underneath here, there is a wee indicator. So it's currently green and it slowly turns red as your cassette gets full, just so you know when you have to go and empty it. 